we've been camping, had a good time, but everything has to end at some point. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here no more. So all this has to get packed up and hit the bricks. First thing you gotta do though is everything in here needs to be stowed somewhere, stashed somewhere. Because everything in here is gonna be a missile hazard once you're going down that road. Somebody's gonna pull out in front of you, gonna slam on the brakes, all this stuff's gonna go flying. So go ahead and put it all away. Put this TV away. I've got double side tape and cut yoga mat pieces because or you can see on the wall where my TV was rubbing and making black scuff marks. If you look back behind the TV on this RPOD 179, there's a little dimple switch up here. I want to go ahead and turn that off for your power boost for your antenna. One less thing to draw power from your battery. Also need to shut all your windows and just for security reasons go ahead and shut your blinds so nobody can see inside your RV. Now for my RPOD, my table has the ability to collapse, <coughs> pull the pin, bam, and then up underneath here is a strap. Okay, so now I've got the table stowed, dogs, food, and treats, it's stashed in there, pull these cushions up, then what I've done is I have a tension rod in here, okay, so tension rod to place. Now my cushions I just stubbed behind there. Now my RPOD 179 has some issues that all develop. This one in a particular case is this ottoman. When the slide comes in, it's gonna cover both these ottomans. This ottoman though has come a little loose. So is my rubber seal right here. Um, but this top is screwed on, so it's not going to work. But inside this ottoman is some piping and some electrical work. So even if I wanted to redo this, it would still be exposed. So you have to make a new box and make it smaller if you want to get rid of this thing. The other problem is this particular ottoman. My dog uses this ottoman to step up and get into the bed when she, on a rare occasion she actually wants to look out the window. The problem though is this is a storage one. It has this removable board, but there's currently no fasteners to keep the board in place. So what ends up happening is while I'm driving down the road, this particular piece since this slides all the way in I can't see this board once the slides in it'll bounce around and jiggle around and wind up crooked and when it did this it only took me like oh, four freaking times before I stopped doing this I take this thing out now and put it up here the reason why is because if I left it here and it jiggled around when I take the slide back out I can't tell it's cockeyed and what will happen is it'll catch this flashing yeah it's popped it off like four times on me slow learner I guess now at this point, you might be tempted to bring the slide in. Ah, but wait. The slide's been out. The top doesn't have a awning to protect the slide. So the top of the slide, once it comes in, it's going to be inside here with all the debris and water that's been sitting up on there. And it's been raining a lot. I'm underneath some trees. So there's quite a bit of stuff probably on top of the slide. So I need to go outside and wipe off the top of the slide before I bring it in. The other thing is I have a tendency to stash things up here. And if I bring the slide in, it's gonna fall onto the slide. And it'll probably roll back and it'll be harder for me to get. So I need to make sure I bring down everything that might be up here. Like flashlight, tension bar. And I'm going to use this tension bar in between these two ottomans so I can stash some more stuff in here and keep it from sliding out. So I place this tension bar, got my pile of dirty laundry, my zero water filter. So as things slide, they don't go anywhere. They stay right here. So I need to dump the black tank. But I want to make sure I got plenty of water in there to help flush the black tank out. So I'm going to fill the bowl, flush it a couple of times, make sure I got plenty of water in the black tank. Then the last thing you want to do before you pack up and go, turn your fan off and close the vent cover. Is make sure that your antenna is pointed the correct direction for aerodynamics so it doesn't get ripped off. I took a lot of crosswind when I was in Arizona back in February, March time frame when I was driving down the interstate and it ripped mine off because of the crosswind. Quick discussion about these indicators. My gray says it's two-thirds full, but I think it's pretty close to all full. Um, based on the fact that my kitchen sink took a little bit to drain earlier, so there's a bubble. But there's a... it's pretty much full. Black, yeah, the black is not full. It's probably about a half full at best. But these gauges tend to get fouled pretty quickly. So they're really teaching it tools for beginners. Once you've done it for a while, they kind of get an idea of how long you can go between dumping tanks. Fresh tank I know is close to empty. There's a little residual water in there. And I'm gonna put a little bit more in for travel water to flush the toilet while I'm traveling or be able to wash my hands when I'm traveling as well. 
and the battery is going to be full because it's plugged in shore power so it's, there's no way to tell that that's actually the full charge capacity of the battery since I'm still using shore power and my converter is keeping everything powered up. Water pump I've got it currently off but I will turn it on later to show you the reason why and that's to wash my hands. This is for the hot water heater when you're using propane and since I'm currently using electricity from shore power I never use this thing unless I'm boondocking. Otherwise, it's always off. Of course, I need to make sure your air conditioner is turned off. This is the bathroom light and it's the porch light. Well, isn't he ambitious? I have a hitchhiker. How the heck did he get way up there? I do not know. Maybe he fell out of the tree and landed on it. I have no slide topper, no awning covering the slide. So I need to get up here. You can see, already see on the roof, there's lots of plant debris. So look at that. If you try and bring your slide in, it's all gonna get jammed in between the slide rubber and the part of the slide. So you gotta get up here and take all this off. And this has only been seven days. So the top of my slide out is cleared off of all debris. I wanna bring my slide in before I start messing with the electrical and the water. It only takes about five to eight times of scraping your back on your slide out when you're messing underneath it to realize that there's a probably a better order to do these things. So anyway, I've checked the slide out the top. It's clearing off. Looked all around the edges of the slide out. There's nothing in the way. I pulled the board up so I don't have to worry about it getting caught if it starts jiggling around. Let's go ahead and bring the slide in. There you go, slides all the way in. And as I talked about the ottoman down here, see there's no way for me to see that board jiggles around. I can't, I can't see once I take the slide back out later on. And that's why this got popped off because of taking that slide out. Now something else you'll discover, these wonderful construction of these guys, this use a lot of staples. And you can see in this particular one, this board was up in here. And it's just stapled in there like that. But unfortunately it won't stay there, it will fall off again. So I need to get some construction adhesive behind it and then remount it to keep it from falling off. It's so now with the slide in all the way, I don't have to worry about catching a corner and scraping my back when I take the electric and water this connections off. To get to the sewer connections they're underneath the slide out so that's another reason why I tend to scrape my back but I gotta go to a dump station that's on the other side of the campground. I need what I call traveling water. Just enough water and tanks so that I can use the sink and flush the toilet while I'm traveling on the road. Just disconnect from your connection here for a city water connection and go straight into the potable water tank. Here you need a couple of gallons at most so you can get a good flush in the toilet and wash your hands. Now when you wind up your hose put it away go ahead and make up your connections so that all the water that's in the line and in the filter stays there. Now there's risk of getting some backflow through there. It's not gonna be much. And then once you connect up before you connect back to your rig just do a quick flush from your hose. You don't have to worry about any backflow from the inlet from the filter getting into your, the part that's going to go in. The other thing you're going to want is a rag so you can wipe down the hose so you minimize how much dirt and sand and everything else that gets inside. A couple last minute things, put your caps back on. This is a good point to talk about how much water should you have. A lot of debate in the forums about this. Some people say you need a full tank of potable water and your empty tank, your black and gray tank's fully empty. Their thinking is that the issue if you only have a little bit of water or half tank of water, all that sloshing, now it causes some sway in your RV. That sloshing could also break the mounts on your tank. I, I don't know. I've not had any problems with that kind of thing, but I also don't carry a lot of water. The other thing is if you have your tank full of water, it's like eight pounds per gallon of water. So if your tank is 40 gallons, that's a lot of weight. It's like another whole person you're lugging behind this thing. And it's the only way is 3,300 pounds. So it's basically adding 10% of the weight. Now my particular R-Pod, like the second month of ownership. This hinge is down here, it broke. So I use this double-sided Velcro strap. It works really good. It's been four years since I did this, but we need to go in here and turn off the electric water heater. This is the hinge I'm talking about. These little pieces here, here and here, they broke. But up underneath here is the hot water switch for the electric. So now it's off. So the hose is stored, stored in the shower so that if it does leak it doesn't go and make a mess anywhere. Now I want to take care of the electricity, so go ahead and switch over to battery powered. I don't use propane when I travel. This is another debate in forums. Some people say travel with propane. I think it's not safe. 
especially when you go and pull into a gas station, you'll probably forget that you're on propane. So now we got it switched over to the battery. Let's go ahead and make sure we turn off all electricity. So the first thing before you touch your electrical work, turn it off. Then you pull it apart. Just like the water hose, wipe all the dust and debris. Collects a lot of dirt, especially when it rains. So the next step is bring up the stabilizer jacks. So I can then lift up at the tongue, put it on the truck. First thing you want to do is go back around, make sure your chocks are in place. So you don't want this thing moving when you lift stabling jacks. They're only meant to stop the wobble. It's not meant to level. They can't take that kind of weight. If you're ever inside your RV without stabilizing jacks, and your dog starts walking around, you'll realize real quick that you forgot to put your stabilizing jacks down. Because you'll notice the wobble. When you're cranking up your stabilizing jack and you notice a lot of screeching sound, you can use a little 3-in-1 oil on the screw thread shaft and that should clean that up and stop that make it easier for you to screw up you can also cheat and just use a power tool so let's go ahead and isolate the propane tank while we're here when you bring your propane tank online you want to open the valve a little slowly initially it tends to slam check your diaphragm and that could cause all sorts of problems with not getting enough propane flow so you can see i've got quite a bit of height difference I want to get this above the ball before I start moving the truck. So if I bang it back too far, it'll bump this by accident. I'm lucky that my truck has all sorts of cameras, so I'll be able to see this when I'm backing up to it. And I can only tell it didn't quite connect up. You know what I'm talking about? Just have to raise it up and down a couple times. Let's talk real quickly about safety chains. You want to cross them in the back. The idea there is that if you cross the chains and it should just come disconnected, it'll hopefully catch in the cross. Your hitch will and therefore it'll provide like a, a hammock kind of idea to try and prevent it from going all over the place and try to control your what is essentially a crash at this point now some people if their chains are too long what they'll try to do is twist you can do a, a little incidental twisting to get it a little bit shorter but don't do it too much it turns out if you twist this enough remember as a kid in swings he probably did this to spin real fast in a swing when you twist the chain up and you start getting these links to start stack on top of each other you can reduce the actual stress strength of your chain significantly something like 70 percent so don't twist it to the point where you've got this kind of stacking link this situation going on but a little couple of twists is not too bad and now my chains are crossed so if the hitch falls hopefully it catches in this little hammock cradle another thing is you want a safety lanyard the way this works is if you fall this back there's a pin back here and that safety lanyard pulls that pin out It'll cause the brakes on your trailer to engage and stop the trailer. Now for a lot of people who have smaller tow vehicles, you have a weight distribution hitch. There's a couple different models of how it's done. It's also sway control. This one I used to have with my 4Runner, but I've taken it off since this big truck doesn't worry. You can see the bracket where I had it mounted before. Now to get those sway bars coming off of your hitch, they're pinned in. Then you rotate them back to the frame. But to get them onto the, that lip, that ledge where you key in, little piece of metal to keep it from sliding back out it helps if you raise up your whole assembly once you at this point to get that sway bar onto there there's also some cheater bars that you can use to pry up on there as well depends on your your particular weight distribution sway control system one last thing you want to make sure that you actually have good ball engagement so that everything's connected up let's go ahead and lift it up I should see this whole assembly start to lift with the jack once I see it starting to lift and it's not coming off the ball then I know I've got good engagement and I don't have to worry about it coming off so now, I can see that so now I can see it grab the ball. Now I'm going to start seeing this whole assembly since this is all connected together on my hitch. I'll see this whole thing come up. There you go. I saw it all lift. A couple last minute items. Pick up my mat and get the dog. There's the door. Lift up on the handle, put it away. Put step away. Now I just pull forward and Get the chocks and the leveling blocks up. Finally take your chocks from on the inside door because it's going to be the first thing you grab to get to your next station. Do a quick walk around. Awnings up. I know the vent covers shut on the shower. Fan is off. My antenna is gone but it would be pointing the correct direction. Steps are up. Chocks are up. Doors shut. All the chains. Safety chain. Hitch is up. All my connections are off, electric water, the hot water heater is off, all the leveling blocks are up, stabilizer jacks are up. Final step of the journey, the gross part. I've already got my 
door open, path to my sink, water pump is on, so I have water pressure, soap is ready, because I want to wash my hands after this. Pull out the sewer hose, do the black tank first, and then the gray tank. The idea there is I want to use the gray tank to rinse out the hose at the end. It's also where you need the adapter. This makes a mess if you don't use the adapter. Some campgrounds you can thread in your hose adapter. Some you can't. Got a foot valve and a rock. That rock is to put on top of your sewer hose so it doesn't bounce. Pull the hose out to stretch it. It twists a bit. So keep that in mind. You may twist it out of there when you straighten your hose. First thing you want to do every time you mess with the cap, make sure the valve is shut. You wouldn't want to take the cap off and realize that only keeping back all that sewage was the cap and you haven't got the hose on yet. Connected, make sure you're still in the drain on the other side of the hose. We're good to go, so here we go. This will take a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead, this particular place has a black tank flush hose available. I'm gonna string the hose to the other side and connect to my black flush tank connection so I can be ready to flush it once I've drained it. Okay, I'm hearing more flow through the black sewer hose. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the spray on to flush it. All right, so the black tank flush is running. You can hear it suckling through. I hear it now pouring out, so I know that it's got good flow. There's no clogs. 30 gallon tank. So I'm pretty confident I can shut the valve for about 15, 20 seconds. Open it, let it drain for 15, 20 seconds, and repeat. Do that about three times, and it should pretty much empty out the tank. All right, so that's a good black tank flush. Go ahead and isolate the water, put this stuff away, and shift over to the gray tank. Now I'm using gray tank water, basically mostly shower water, sink water, flush out my sewer line. All right, so I've drained the tank, get a little quick jiggle on it. Once I shut the valve, a little quick jiggle, get a little bit out of the pipe, pop it and twist it over. Here's what little drips out. Set this over to the side so it doesn't fall over. I'll put the cap back on, and then just drain the hose. I moved out of the way for another guy to use a dump station. My caps are back on, valves are shut. I locked the door, locked my storage compartment, turned the water pump off. So for some of those people who are, don't have sewer connections, but you're gonna be staying in that spot for longer than your gray tank or black tank can take it, got this little guy here. To fill up from your tank, and then take it to the dump station. Oh, I think this, I haven't done it in a while. I think this just falls down like this. And then you just open up the... There you go. Now this connection you can see through so you can see when it's draining. Mine is opaque so you can't see the, the fluid as it's coming out. So that's your solution if you don't have a sewer connection. One last thing you want to do while you're traveling is get an idea of what your travel trailer should look like in your rearview mirror. I just happen to have two stickers. One sticker here, I can see the whole sticker and the top portion of the sticker over here. So while I'm driving down the road, I just can quickly glance up. As long as I still see those two stickers in that kind of condition, then I know that my tires should be fairly okay. I can use my mirrors, but my particular trailer kind of hides behind the wheel well area of my truck so I can just barely make out the tire of my travel trailer because my truck's so wide but uh, yeah just a little quick little hints to help you keep track of where your trailer is and how it should look as long as everything's fine and then I have written up here with a grease marker the height of my travel trailers nine foot seven inches so if I come across the bridge I don't have to panic and try to figure out how tall my travel trailer is if I can clear the bridge by going underneath it I just quickly look up here, I see it's 9 foot 7 inches. I had to move the film this so I'm on the side of the road. But I want to do a quick check, make sure that my lights work on the trailer. Now, as a rule of thumb, I don't try to travel at night. There might be storms, I might have to turn on the lights. I'll go around, make sure all my lights are turned on. All my side lights work. We're good to go. Clean the ones up at the top. So if I'm in a thunderstorm and reduce visibility from the rain, people can still see me. 
while I'm traveling. 